like if you see sometimes a great opportunity isn't always going to be the best opportunity for you you know like oh i'm gonna go fight everybody confrontational but you don't get recognized um for like accomplishments for accomplishments uh, or even amongst your peers you don't get respect from, like i don't say respect but there is a difference between somebody that just lays low under the radar before somebody that puts themselves out there yeah, yeah you get yeah. what i mean yeah you have to be confrontational like it's like you can yeah. run away from it welcome back to the podcast with your host brian sumo sumardi the number one place to feed your curiosity and we're getting right back into it <laughs> round two <laughs> exactly <laughs> welcome jason oh, what's yeah. going on brother what's going on welcome yeah. back yeah good to be back jason uh came back from i mean you were way past basic training now yeah yeah, yeah. so you're like in your station you uh mm -hmm. station uh, or? Uh, yeah station out in my first duty station first duty in, station uh, there we go what's it called uh for bliss El Paso, Texas. What's your MOS? Uh, 91 Bravo. 91 so Bravo. I'm a uh, wheel mechanic. Okay. Yeah. That translates good for you, no? It did. Yeah. It worked out, um, but it also made me realize that I, I want to change. Oh, <laughs> career. already? You know, I love it. No, don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it. I'm always going to do it, but I see it now more as something that I want to do as a hobby. Okay. Because it's, it's fun, you know? It's, yeah. It's challenging for me. But I just honestly don't care about working on other people's vehicles other than my own. Exactly. You know, because when you do it all day as work, the last thing you want to do is work on your own car. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's for anything, anything. Unless, like, you have, like, a real drive. But I think at that point, you're not even... You're doing it both as a career and for yourself. You get what I mean? Yeah. I was thinking the same thing, like... Uh, well, Carlos, mm -hmm. I was thinking about, um, what's it called? Starting a detail business. Mm -hmm. So what I realized, my building gives out like free water and like a free space for like oh, cleaning cars. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I could start a detail detailing business around here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, cause I, I went to, I went to Target. Mm -hmm. I bought a clay bar, detailer, wheel shine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just like wipes to yeah, clean yeah. the uh, upholstery, the seats. Yeah. yeah. I'm like. When I was cleaning my car, I was like, yo, this is great. Yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. But then I realized I, I did um, Myra's car. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I don't think I could do more than two of these a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's actually, like, you know, and then having to do that over and over. Yeah. 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 Especially when it's, like, not cool stuff. If you mm. do, like, if it's, like a, like, a maintenance thing, like oil change. Yeah. I can do oil change. Rotating tires, yeah. alignment maybe. Mm. All right. If you tell me to like, all right, we gotta we gotta take take out this engine, replace this gasket. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and that's how it is. It's it's just you know you don't want to keep like imagine having to do two of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you like, I just can't. Over I feel that. Man. For myself, I could do it all day. I'd much rather do it like myself, yeah. You know, like for me, I'm like I'm saving money one because it's my own car and like the own personal joy. Like I did it, you know. I I I'd be saying uh, with the military, I think the the one thing that I learned mm -hmm. from my service was doing more shit that I didn't like to do helped me figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, you know. Facts. Yeah. Did you you already know what you want to do now? Like so, once you get out? Yeah, I want to get into like the IT realm, okay. into computers. I'm yeah. not exactly sure if I want to do more of a like more I guess computing or the hardware, software hardware. You get what I mean? Okay. So like um, uh, coding versus yeah. versus like, actual like building a, a computer engineering know? kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be dope. Is it more before the money? No, no, no. I think it's just because like it's, it. it's at least looking into it. It's it's always evolving, yeah. especially now. It just keeps evolving, evolving, and I just want to go dive into that. You know, it's always fascinated me, like coding or the hardware. Just the overall, it's a whole new universe. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much opened up, and I want to, I want to get into it. And oh, more than anything, the challenge. Yeah. Um, 
you know, because it's, it's something that I'm new to, but at the same time, like, I think going into the military has turned me on to challenges. Um, I don't know if that happened to you, too. Like, it's just, I have a different attitude towards it now. Before, it used to be like, oh, a challenge, let me, I'm going to walk away from this. <laughs> mm. you know, but now it's like, challenge, okay. Well, first, I always ask myself, is it worth my time? Yeah. You know? And the second is just like, okay, how can I do this Like. If, if it's something that I want to take on. Like now or yeah. before? Um, now. Okay. Now. It's more of like, okay, if it's worth my time, Yeah. how do I figure it out? Like, what, do I have, what are the first steps? And usually, like, something I'm learning now um, is either, like, I used to just, like, dive into stuff. Yeah. You know, I which remember. I think is, like, you know, the, <laughs> the best thing to go about it. But sometimes, you know, you got to kind of st- take a step back, see what you're diving into. Before, yeah. You know, just blindly going into it. So, Bro, that's funny. I, was, uh, I just had, like, another conversation yeah. uh, about, like, risk management. That's basically what risk management is. You got to, like, mm-hmm. instead of just going head in, yeah. you're like, wait, wait, wait. What am I gonna lose yeah. by yeah, yeah. by doing this? Yeah, and um, I, one thing you said too that made me think about something. Um, have you ever heard of uh, the four pillars of happiness? I have. I don't know what they are though. Um, so off the top of my head, let me see if I can remember. It's the perception of control. Okay. Uh, a sense of belonging. Mm-hmm. A sense of progression, and purpose. Okay. There we go. And then, like, I feel you on that. You said, like, you like IT because it's always, like, evolving. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's kind of how I feel about right now, even in my work. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least with media. Yeah. Media especially because now I can always work on someone else's story mm-hmm. or, like, figuring out, like, how people think, mm-hmm. you know? And always, like, pictures we're always watching tv we're watching yeah. something yeah yeah social media yeah like you can always evolve on that and i'm like that's it like you, you think so like those four pillars all make sense to you yeah in that sense yeah yeah and i, I feel like you, you get like you got a better sense of like problem solving mm-hmm. you know like because now instead of before you kind of just like walk away be a little bit less confrontational now you're yeah. like all right, what's the real problem? What's the root? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, what's my first step? Yeah. You can, like, break it down more. Yeah, diagnosing it. And, yeah, for sure, I I have to think being, not only being a mechanic, but being in the military, too. It's it's definitely giving me that attitude because, I mean, when you're diagnosing anything in a car, it's the same thing. You're kind of like, okay, where do I start? Yeah. And then military, it's like, you have to be confrontational like it's like you can yeah. run away from it but Someone's gonna find you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sooner <or later>. yeah. <laughs> some somebody or something is it's gonna it's yeah <laughs> that makes sense i, I remember there's uh, so many guys like if, if you're in like a big uh platoon mm-hmm. i remember like or even like back in like basic training yeah. if you're in a big like uh squad hall yeah uh you're just like all right there's only four drill instructors Mm -hmm. if i'm just away from the action (laughs) yeah because you kind of know like which which guys are like the loud obnoxious ones who always get in trouble Mm -hmm. just stay away from him yeah yeah. that's where all the drills are just gonna be (laughs) (laughs) people can slide by um, I remember I've, I've heard of stories where there's like over a hundred people mm-hmm. with like four drill instructors and just like people would just yeah slide through the cracks yeah and yeah. I, you feel that with the unit too yeah yeah for sure but what I've realized because you know me I'm a I'm a pretty chill. quiet person chill quiet person yeah. you know not not confrontational but you don't get recognized um for like accomplishments for accomplishments uh, or even amongst your peers you don't get respect from like i don't say respect but there is a difference between somebody that just lays low under the radar before somebody that puts themselves out there yeah, yeah you yeah. get what i mean yeah and it's not necessarily like you know i'm saying like like oh i'm gonna go fight everybody yeah and then everybody fucking hates you but right you gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta have some balls and like put yourself out there yeah you know what i mean 
So that's that's definitely what I I learned because for basic that's how it was. I just lay low. Yeah, you know, cause pass. Yeah, yeah. just pass it. And then I, cause I remember somebody, a few people telling me like, you know, it's better if you just they don't remember your name. That's in basic. Yeah, yeah. But got the same advice. At the end of it though, I was a little upset because I had there were other soldiers that got recognized for. Um, whatever reason they just got recognized because they were putting themselves out there even though we we're doing the same amount of work right or even in some cases i was doing more work than them but because yeah. i laid low they got recognized for it and they got you know rewarded for it and i was like damn yeah. <laughs> like that could have been me but because i laid so low under the radar and just stood behind the scenes that wasn't recognized for that so wow that, that's actually really powerful i, I didn't even thought about that yeah, I mean, even now, like, look, look what you're doing. Right now. now you're just putting yourself out there, right? But it's so funny because when I was in the military, yeah. I did not at all. My six years, yeah, I never, I never stuck my neck out. Mm-hmm. That's funny to me. Mm-hmm. But like you, you, you went and got by though. But yeah, if you would have actually put yourself out there, like, I wonder if I could have made it a career. Possibly, possibly. Oh. Uh, but that's that's another thing too, where like, so I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna see. I'm 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 gonna still gonna feel for it. I'm not fully convinced that I want to stay in. Yeah. And it's not like you know, there's anything wrong with it. You know, it's just not my cup of beer or cup of tea. Some people. Yeah. Say. Um. So I think those that and it, and it's for anything. You know, it doesn't have to be just military. Anything. You know, yeah. you have a drive for it. You put yourself out there, right? Right, right. Um, but those who really put themselves out there, you know, uh, see opportunity. Okay. What was your contract? Four year. Four years. Four by four. Okay. Yeah, and they really want to, you know, up, up it up. You know, they always want to get the next badge or next uh, rank or you know get build up their portfolio and you know so whenever they go in front of the board they. Yeah, they have something, you know, under their belt. Um, but you gotta really love the military for that. You gotta really want to be a soldier, a marine, a sailor, an airman, yeah, whatever it may be. Um, I feel like it has to be your career though. Like, yeah. I mean, not career as in like military base, but yeah. like whatever your MOS is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually you know what I don't think I could have been. Uh, what were you? I was uh, 0313, 0311, so like okay. eleven bro- infantry. Oh, okay. There's no way I could have lasted <laughs> 20 years infantry. No, that's infantry is a whole nother breed, bro. I would have went full infantry cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Infantry is another breed. It's those guys are. I really respect for them because yeah. those guys, like, if there's a group of guys that want to go out to the bar with or go out, yeah, anywhere, they're the most fun. Yeah. The most fun. <laughs> They'll have, yeah. And, like, you know, if, if, if shit goes. You know, hits the fan. You they'll definitely have your back. Yeah, but like just yeah. It's <laughs> they're just they're just. In the, I don't know. You you've got to live through it to to see what infantry men are. But they're the funniest motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> bro and you know what? That's what I was thinking about this. I heard this um this like analogy. If if you have to uh while out. To mm-hmm. show your personality mm-hmm. at nighttime, that means you're not yourself in the daytime, mm-hmm. and like that's how I felt to be honest. So like my yeah. whole time in the Marine Corps is like, yeah. say what, like from six, mm-hmm. <laughs> six to five, yeah. <laughs> from oh six to seventeen hundred. Yeah, I'm just a slave to the government. Uh, and true. then as soon as we have liberty, mm-hmm. like Friday night, yeah, uh, especially when I was in San Diego, yeah, as soon as we had liberty. We were going out. <laughs> well, I, that, I think when I was in San Diego, I was still 20, so I couldn't really do much. Yeah. But um, we would like, rent out hotels, definitely hit the strip clubs. Oh, yeah. And we would just spend all the money that we made yeah. <laughs> in the week <laughs> just going out to eat, yeah. doing follow, chasing girls, going mm-hmm. out clubs. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, I, I think that that's that's something that I'm learning now. Cause like now I feel like I'm I'm more at peace with myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm developing better habits where I'm tired at night now. Yeah, yeah. 
Cause I would say like, I thought I was getting old, but now I can be myself in the daytime, do my job and yeah. chill out. Mm. But I feel like you're you're learning that now. Oh yeah. Her. Oh yeah. Um, I definitely don't go out as much as the other one guys do because they're. I want to say like I'm old, but it just doesn't really interest me anymore. I'm more like. I want to go back to my barrack. I go out. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. I go out, go see the town. Yeah. Um, and every now and then I'll go out at night if I want to. Um, but I'm just not so interested in, in like, you know, Clubbing. let's go. Oh, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, clubbing. Get drunk. Let's go, get fucked up. You know, all that. What do you do in your downtime now? Read. Read or exercise. Okay. Um, what do you read? But right now this, what the fuck is it called? It's, uh... It's by Dick Gregory, the Black History nonfiction. Not nah, nonfiction. Yeah, it's yeah. nonfiction. So he's pretty much like telling like the the stuff that's not told during with Black History. Okay. Yeah, and it's a bit more philosophical. I find myself like I like like more like the philosophical reads. Yeah. Just because it's helps you think. Yeah, yeah. See, see the world a, a little bit different. I feel that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And especially now that, you know, I'm on my own, um, I've realized I have a very, uh, what's that word? Uh, sheltered way of looking at the world. Like? Um, before. Your past? Like yeah, yeah. Because, life? you know, when you live here for so long, you start living, like, you know, thinking, like, uh, the people around you. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, it was my family. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing, you know, wrong with the way that they see the world, but yeah. it's only one way of seeing the world. Right. You know, when you want to live your life a certain way, like, you got to kind of, you got to open up your mind, right? Yeah, yeah, See yeah. what else is out there, so. Um, I think what really got me into it was uh, stoicism. Okay. Um, reading a little bit on that, but, and then, you know, when I found out there's, like, a whole book about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wow, okay. Like, you know, and then, like, whole, like, just studies on it. But, you know, for me, stoicism, I could only, I, I always like, when I read something, I always like, uh, what is it? Taking it with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not somebody that wants to make it my whole personality. Which, right. you know, I respect it. Like, you know, if you want to do that, by all means, but. You want to integrate it to, like, your way of doing yeah, it. Yeah. There's certain things, um, you know, like, not getting worked up over something that's out of your control. Yeah. Well, rewind back. I wanna, I wanna, what, what are you learning now, like? Not not to really bash on like your old point of view, but like, yeah. what did you learn from your like sheltered point of view to like now? Like, what are you more open to now? Relationships. What do you mean? So relationships all around, whether it's friendship or um, romantic, romantic, or you know, just talking business. to somebody, yeah, business or whatever, or whatever it may be. I'm a lot more open now about it. Like before, I feel like I was more reserved. Kind of thought that. I I, ha I knew it all. You mm. know what I mean? Um, especially with uh, friendships and, and uh, romantic relationships. Or uh, even business. Yeah. Well, I haven't done much business, uh, built any business relationships. Well, you kind of do it on the day-to-day -day with your other soldiers. Yeah, to yeah. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> talk um, to the armory. Gosh. Talk to the, the food people. That's true. That's chow true. hall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, Everything relates, bro. So I, I've, I've opened up a lot more uh, with getting to know people and, and not taking things so personally anymore. Okay. Um, and yeah, just, just really taking the time to actually get to know people rather than like, okay, the first impression, I, it didn't rub me off, right? Or mm -hmm. rub me the right way. So I'm just not going to like fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Now it's kind of like, oh, okay, maybe, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe that's just who they are, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think something that I read was, um, what is it? Don't, is it? Don't judge somebody by how they make you feel, but what they do. You know what I mean? By their actions? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I know I have... Something else that I realized is that I'm a pretty sensitive person. <laughs> I I, yeah. I don't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I like at first I was ashamed of it for the longest time. I was very sure. I guess it's just being a guy. You know, yeah, I want to admit that, but um, I'm pretty sensitive when it comes to just like interactions. But now I don't 
take that as as personal anymore. Like it's still there. Yeah. Like, there's certain points where I'm just like, oh, okay, like, damn. But like, you know, at the same yeah. time, like, I'm not gonna be like all butthurt about it. You know. I feel like you got tougher skin now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just like, okay, let me just see what, what's what's going on. What's kind of dig deeper, but not too much into it. Yeah. It's out of my control. So. Right. That's dope. Yeah. I I have that thing about that too is like, how? What do you think changed, or how did you develop? tougher skin because i feel like a lot of people oh. are really sensitive um when they could be a little bit more tougher <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just my point yeah, of view sure um i think for me was definitely a big contribution was uh drill sergeants drill sergeants because it's like yelling at you all the time yeah but there were some i don't know maybe it was because i was older that i didn't take a lot of what they said personally for one i knew it was just their job yeah and two, they're human too. Like I had one drill sergeant that she was, she was a real, you know, pain in the ass. You know, she, she, but it was just. She picked on you? She didn't pick on me. Oh. Just, she was just a real, how do I put it? She was just a pain in the ass. That's uh, all. all right. But I, I realized like, you know, once it was like off hours. And kind of just, like, she had to be there, like, on days off where she wasn't, where she was kind of had her guard down. Or, better said, so I don't know, Marines, they, I, I think you might be different because you're infantry. Mm. But when we went in, there are phases. So there's red phase, which is, like, the first three weeks, which is just, like, what you think of, like, typical uh, boot camp training where it's, like, they're screaming at you, get down, you know, do 1,500 push-ups, you know, this and that. Yeah. And then eventually it starts, like, easing off. Okay. Right. So once the easier phases start coming in, you start seeing your drill sergeant more as human. You know, they're not on your butt so much about things. They're not, oh. you know, screaming, you know, um, they're more lenient about things. Right. So once I started seeing that side about her on her, I was like, oh, OK, she's human. <laughs> you know, oh, she's not this like robot of a of a drill sergeant. Yeah. Um, And then also, like you said, leading as well you know um leadership yeah when you're so sensitive about things like you take ev- what everything does what everybody does personally no but it's not like that you know especially when you got to lead a group and mm-hmm. you have like one or two that don't want to listen yeah but you still got to get the objective done right right um and then also just being around like a bunch of dudes you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like after a while it's like oh okay um I think me as an introvert, I never experienced it. I was never a part of a team. I was never like, mm. you know, uh, I tried to be one of the guys, but I was coming from an introverted, you know, just being a loner. Yeah. Trying to jump into a group of guys that are like. It's obnoxious. Yeah. Obnoxious. <laughs> just talk about the dumbest <laughs> shit. And, and, you know, you're, you're over here like taking it personally because somebody called you stupid or something like that but yeah. in reality it's just you're just being a dude you know yeah. i don't know that 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 that's a big key right there i was yeah. talking on that like i think i learned marine infantry mm-hmm. that's how i learned how to tolerate small talk because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> i think you and i had this conversation before like we we hated small talk we're mm-hmm. like what's the point of this this doesn't make sense yeah but then the more i had to hang around like some of my people mm-hmm. i just realized like all right we'll just talk about random things yeah. all right, talk about like oh this is what the gun does all yeah. right this this is what i did with my family last weekend i'm yeah. like all right cool yeah all right. i don't really care <laughs> but i mean we're communicating we're bonding and i'm yeah. like that's key because mm-hmm. I don't know maybe tell me if you're the same way as me but I don't mind like mm-hmm. I do this with Robbie actually like we could probably stay in the same room and like be quiet but okay. as long as I know that another person's in the room yeah that like I feel closer to somebody yeah yeah you sure. know yeah. yeah you feel that same thing oh yeah like, you're and you're okay with it for me I actually appreciate those kind of relationships yeah where I can Relax. sit in silence yeah with yeah. somebody and it doesn't have to be awkward yeah or it doesn't turn awkward yeah you yeah. know it's um yeah i actually appreciate those kind of relationships but at the same time it's like 
you need sometimes, your obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, you need a balance too. You know, you need that one friend that's just going to say just the most random shit or, or not the most random shit, but actually talk or something of substance, you know, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I feel like that, uh, n- now, now that I'm out, I, I had to learn how to like pick and choose my friend groups. Yeah. You know, like I have my military friends who are pretty like, I know that was like got my back. Yeah, it's yeah. more like day one people. Yeah, yeah. And then I got like my business friends. Yeah. So my real estate people who are like, I can talk to you about work, mm-hmm. but like, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if I have like my around girlfriend, it's yeah. like, all right, now I can kind of be like silly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. or. I don't even know if I have any other aspect. Oh, fitness. My fitness friends. Okay, yeah. Different too. Like they they like, all right, those are my adrenaline junkies. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, let's let's go for a run. Let's go for a walk. Let's go, let's go lift some stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, let's go sleep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> those those are my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. Sure. Well, you you like working out now. Yeah. What are you what are you doing for workouts? Are you like joining CrossFit I'm gonna, or something? I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm I'm still kind of just like figuring out, figuring what what I like. Um, what oh. I started getting a little bit more into now is um, like things that help with my joint movements, mm. that helps my joints because mobility, stretching. Yeah, a lot more stretching, but I also want to build muscle. Okay. Um, you know, for the longest time, I was like, oh, I don't like posterity. You know, I don't want to yeah. be that shallow guy. But the vanity. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I pass by the mirror, and it's like after that pump, you're kind of like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, <laughs> it, it just makes you feel good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, I don't want to be that guy. I'm, I'm finding the line where it's, you know, I want to look good, but at the same time, like, I want to be able to run like five miles, and I'm getting there. Okay. You know, getting being able to run five miles within like, I don't know, thirty five minutes or something like that. You know. Five um, miles. So like a that's fast as fuck. Yeah. So when I was at uh pre rasp, I don't know if I told you I did pre rasp. I don't know what that so, is. Uh, Ranger. Oh. oh, not Ranger. The regiment. Okay. You're, you're pretty much trying out to be the regiment or okay. in the regiment. I did that for about a month. Pre rasp is about a month, and then you go to rasp, which is the actual uh, what's it called? Elimination process, I guess. Okay. Kind of weeding out everybody. Yeah, but yeah. pre rasp is the same thing. Pre rasp is pretty much getting you ready for rasp. Okay. And then there's different levels to that, and then you eventually get your scroll, and then from there you go to, if you go, to ranger school, which. But yeah. So, anyways, when I was in pre rasp, it pretty much like ease you. Not I don't even say ease you in, but it's like they show you what's what's to come. Yeah. Which is like workout every single day. Every day, run five miles. Um, they try to make it to 35 minutes, but it, it comes out to like 40 to an hour. Because, you know, these are people that are just starting. What's your time right now? Right now, uh, three minutes. I could do that. Wait, three minutes? Three three miles. Oh, miles. <laughs> three <laughs> minutes. Like, whoa, miles. that's fast. Well, actually, I have like a eight to nine minute mile right now around there eight nine okay yeah. that's yeah that's normal so um, that's like what 24 27 mile yeah. three mile all mm-hmm. right okay um but you know i always want to push myself yeah uh and even when i get to five miles i want to start reaching for you know seven miles reaching for 10 miles eventually so are you like into running now like really into running oh uh, no <laughs> okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't like it but you know it's you just, just do it it's, like i said it's a challenge now it's yeah a challenge for me um and weightlifting too so back to weightlifting i want to have functionality also right you know it was funny because i know this guy that he's in, he's in my platoon big guy i've seen his process from when he, we started out in the same unit around the same time but he's really into the gym now mm-hmm. we're doing this these workouts well not workouts they're having a competition oh, i was like i'm surprised they didn't choose you to do this competition he's like, nah bro i, I couldn't do this and i'm Why? like wait what you've been working out <laughs> like yeah. what do you mean he's like nah i'm just like because they were doing a lot of um like tire what are, what are these called flips. tire flips um these like kind of it was more like crossfit kind of oh, okay workouts so i was just like wait so pretty much your muscles are just for looks and i mean he said it he was like yeah pretty much and i was like oh okay because he's like i'd get tired real fast i'm like that's not where i want to be you know oh um 
But I saw over when I was at pre rest these guys, big dudes that would easily be able to run like 10 miles. I think my biggest inspiration was this guy. We called him Grand Padre. This guy was at least mm, late 40s, 50s. Yeah. But this guy was in shape. He was like, it was funny because you've, you've rucked, right? Yeah. He would ruck. And I remember, like, you know, it just looked like he was walking. Maybe it was just really long strides he was taking. But I would always have to trottle behind him. Yeah. Like, as soon as I thought that I caught up to him, he was going fast. He would leave me in the dust. And I'm like, oh, crap, let me do that. And then, you know, it was just, like, over and over. We did that for at least, like, five, six miles. Bro. Yeah. And this guy was, for him, this was, like, you know, breakfast. This was, yeah. you know, what he did before his workout, you know? <laughs> Bro, all right. Let me tell you a story. So when I was in uh, in San Diego, mm-hmm. my uh, so LAV school, light armor vehicles. So yeah. I went from uh, basic to SOI, school of infantry, and then advanced infantry training school. So mm-hmm. um, my LAV school was right next to, um, what am I thinking? MARSOC. Okay. So like Marine Special Forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we basically had the similar story of that. We have, okay. like, they took maybe, or they, they asked anybody, Hey, yeah, anybody yeah. here, you want to apply? Go, yep. go for it. Mm-hmm. Yo, those Marsoc dudes, no joke. Like, I actually, you know what? I remember one of them, I'm about like five, three and a half, five, mm-hmm. four. Mm-hmm. This dude, five, two, yeah. just yoked. Same, same story. Like yeah. for me, I had the, I hated SOI just because of those rucks. Yeah. Because as a short guy, you know, you start, start up front <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then you find your way all the way in the back <laughs> and then you do that yo-yo thing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't handle this no more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that, that one dude, that five, two dude. Yeah. He, he was actually one of like, uh, the instructors. Okay. Same, same thing. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm like jogging. Yeah. Jogging with my ruck. He's mm-hmm. like. Just walk, just, yeah. Like, he's walking. I'm like, how are you keeping this yeah. pace? Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I still don't know to this day. Mm-mm. Like, if you if you take off all the weight off of me, mm-hmm. I can run. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I I enjoy running. I, I go like five miles every mm-hmm. every now and then. I go around Bethesda. Yeah. But it still takes me the fastest I've probably ever done like 52 minutes. Okay. So 52 to an hour hour five. Yeah. yeah. That's like this is me like at a chill pace i'm mm. not like sprinting the entire time i'm like yeah. i'm actually running stop walk you run, walk, yeah, run okay, walk okay uh but like if you if you ever figure it out let me know i want to know how that guy <laughs> just be like yeah I was, I was talking to robbie about that too i'm like how do these guys like just yeah like it's literally just the same uh, pace speed walk mm-hmm. i don't get it yeah the crazy thing is, it's like, it doesn't even look like he's speed... Oh, this guy didn't look like he was speed walking. He was just yeah. walking normally. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying, too. Like, my guy looked like he was just walking. Mm-hmm. But I know he's shorter than me mm-hmm. with weight, and he's still acting yeah. like it's nothing. I'm phased. I'm phased. <laughs> I don't get it. And to me, that that's... I, I like being around that, too, because I was like, okay, this is possible. Like, yeah. These, these things are like... These guys, what we thought... What I thought was like a huge workout for the day. This is just their warm ups. Yeah. They're doing like I have a friend, he actually he's he's gone through it. He's now out in Savannah. Yeah. And he's like every morning we wake up, we go for a ten mile run. Every day. Every day. We go for a ten mile run and then we work out for the next two hours. <sighs> go eat breakfast. that's that's before breakfast. <laughs> All right, they go eat breakfast, they go to child, and then they have to work out more for another like three hours till noon till lunch. And then they go to school after that. And then I think they still work out after that, too. But I'm sure there's, like, a certain point. I am i don't think they work out because, I mean, they got to rest. You yeah. Know? But the amount of workouts that they do, it's like, whoa, that's, that's yeah. insane. But I would want that kind of thing. I don't know why. Maybe it's just being, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's like <clears throat> how we talked about earlier, like that, that sense of progression. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, too um i want to say last year i met tim kennedy oh shit. Okay. yeah he, he did a little ruck run in dc mm-hmm. and i haven't had a had a weight <laughs> on my back in forever <laughs> this, this is supposed to be like a civilian it's like a charity run mm-hmm. um but he said if you if you guys have rucks bring it so i yeah. brought my old old book bag mm-hmm. i filled up i actually i literally put um plates i got a little <laughs> uh 
like maybe four 10 pound plates. I yeah, had 40 yeah. pounds on my back yeah. with, with, uh, with a big uh, hydro jug. Mm -hmm. And boy, this was, <laughs> this was summertime. I want to yeah, say yeah. this was like oh, early June. Yeah, yeah. I want to say we, we started the March around 11, mm -hmm. didn't finish till one. It was like from like Capitol Hill to Washington Monument and back. Okay. And like, I'm looking left and right. I was literally looking at video last night too, for some reason. And like all the civilians with no weight on the back look fine, sweating. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm like, why am I <laughs> just like dying? And then yeah. I realized like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. I got 40 pounds on my back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was only one other dude, but he was active. I think mm -hmm. he, he put like 65, 65 pounds on his back. Damn. And you know what's crazy? It's like when you first do it, like you're like, oh okay, thirty five pounds, fifty pounds doesn't sound like a lot, right? But after uh, a while, no, I know it. <laughs> I know it. After a while, it, it gets to you. Um, I'll never forget my first truck. I hated that. <laughs> I hated it because I had the most uncomfortable boots. I had to wear my OCP. Yeah, this is summertime too, and then having to carry. And then the thing is, it's there's a you have to set it up a certain way. Yeah. So all the weight is on the upper back, not on the lower back. I thought it was the opposite. I didn't really care. I just kind of just like stuffed everything. And then I met the weight, whatever. But it was so unevenly distributed. Yeah. I felt it as I was, I was rucking because I still didn't know how to like adjust my backpack or the, the straps. Um, you know, and the thing is mm. that they want, it, they want it taped. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do once once you you're figure it out yeah. <laughs> so it was really uncomfortable i remember it being like on my lower back my shoulders were killing me um my feet were killing me um and this was only like two three miles <laughs> like in hindsight now i'm like i could have easily done that even in my sleep yeah but um yeah yeah but it it i think that's another thing too that's another one that definitely built mental toughness rucks rucks for <laughs> sure because they suck yeah they suck but you can do it yeah it, it i think it breaks it breaks like your mental barriers yeah you know yeah for sure like i, I there's no way i can do like and yeah in me hindsight yeah. there's no way i could do 20 miles with 80 pounds on my back i'm like but i did it yeah yeah exactly you know? Yeah, <laughs> and and I think back, I'm like, I mean, yeah, I was tired at the end. Yeah, but I was like, I was nowhere near dying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And it's it's you learn to. I that's for me the the definition of embracing the suck. Yeah, because you really don't have a choice. You right. know, you can either hate yourself and keep going, like you know, you got to keep going. Yeah, hate yourself. Or find a way to kind of like soothe yourself or just embrace it and like, okay, let's keep it going. Yeah, it's life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think uh, the one thing that I learned through like boot camp, mm -hmm. like basically through the whole like drill, uh, <clears throat> drill instructors. Yeah. You know, like, this is going to be over in 12 weeks. This is, this is something I just have to deal with for this time being. Yeah. Because I know like, it's like always understanding there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like it's so easy. Like now that I'm back in civilian life, it's yeah. like, when is, when am I going to see the light? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, what am I waiting for? Am I just waiting for my next paycheck? Mm -hmm. Am I waiting for, I don't know, am I going to go out this weekend? Yeah. Am I going to get a burger at the end of the day? Yeah. You know? But then you kind of you get you get so many distracting distractions mm -hmm. in the civilian side. I I miss I miss the simplicity of being in the military. Yeah, because yeah. like you got the chow hall, you wake up at a certain time, yeah. you get off work at the same time, mm -hmm. then you have a little bit of time to rest, repeat. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And for me, I think I don't know. It's um maybe I say it now because I'm in it, but it's a. It gets, I don't know, it's just, to me, I think, and th this is why I really got into reading and, and starting to go to, because I didn't even just want to look forward to the weekend, mm. you know? I feel like there, it's it's really like, you're always looking forward to the weekend. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, that's how you want to live your life, by all means. Yeah. But I got into a habit where it's like, 
there's no difference between Saturday and Monday to me. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and that's where it kind of, cause like, I get, I get bored easily with that. Yeah. Um, with just, sense. you know, the Monday, I like it though. Now I do. I like it. Like before I had to get adjusted to it, but now I like it cause it, it makes days just, I want to say go by, but gives me a bit of a purpose, like something to look forward to at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, whether it's a, you know, finish a read or a workout. Um, rather than just like, oh, okay, I wake up, go to work, come back, you know, I don't know, scroll through Instagram or watch a movie and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what, what made you, what do you, what do you think was that, that, that tipping point of like my Saturday is the same thing as my Monday? When I was a civilian? Or, or in the army? I guess now, yeah. What do you, how you think about, how, how, how did you start thinking like that? Oh, um, I, I don't know. I think it was just because, I think it was in AIT when I was in school, when every, every like, Thursday, mid- midway, Wednesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. my first sergeant would always be like, hell yeah, it's about to be Friday, Friday's in two days, and I was just kind of like, damn, but, like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I could only do so much. Right. Um. And then it's a it's something that I wanted to get away from. Mm. Um, even before I joined the military, was I didn't want just to look for for the weekend. Yeah, because I think that just I don't know where I saw it. It was like Facebook or something where it's just like you're just always looking for that next high, high exactly. Yeah, and I wanted to get away from that. I didn't I didn't want to keep going to like, you know, oh I need to go. Which I'm not against, like, you know, drinking, it's it's cool, you know, yeah. socially or whatever, but, like, when it's, like, I'm going to go get fucked up. Yeah. It, cause it, I think I think I got you what you're saying. So, like, it's like a, it's like a dopamine hit. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're addicted to adrenaline. I was, I was talking to the other guy, too. Um, <clears throat> what was it? I want to say, f- like, finding your next high is, like, a hedonic circle mm-hmm. or cycle where it's like you're pushing the wheel or pushing the boulder up the hill mm-hmm. to only let it fall just so you can do it again yeah you're going nowhere yeah but then like what you said too like when when you have actually have a purpose is like oh i want to i want to learn more i yeah. want to continue to get better i i i actually want to push a boulder yeah. up a hill yeah. but then It'll make me better. Like it'll stay there, yeah. so I can push like another boulder yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's it's a sign too, where it's like you really don't have meaning, where all you want to do is just escape your reality. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's like a that's a sign of growth. I think. Um. I kind of kind of want to like wrap wrap it up like right here with this. So the thing yeah. about like. To, to f- like kind of what I said earlier, actually, mm-hmm. to figure out the things you want to do, you have to do shit that you don't like to do. Yeah. Um, but that's what I got out of it. I want to see if you had one thing to teach to anybody, mm-hmm. let alone like your younger you. Yeah. What would you want to teach them or him? My younger self, if I were to tell them like what like if i were to look back at my my younger self and look at him and yeah what kind of advice is like hey stop stop being oh yeah whatever uh patience 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 and actually no i would it would be definitely be patience would be like the second but i think the first is go after it don't be afraid be more like i told you what we were talking about earlier be more confrontational you know don't don't shy away from challenges. Okay. Um, yeah. I, you know, don't, don't rush things either. You know, like I said, patience. Um, I, yeah, that's what I would definitely tell. Oh, if there is one thing that I wanted to tell them though, yeah. it would definitely be more, be more assertive. So like, don't rush it, but go after what you want kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go after it. The, 
but also, you know, you got to learn patience too, you know? Because mm-hmm. not every opportunity is going to be a great opportunity. You get what I mean? Right, 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 right. Like, Risk tolerance, we were talking yeah, about too. Like, we're tolerant, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, if, if you see, sometimes a great opportunity isn't always going to be the best opportunity for you, you know? Okay. Maybe you just got to wait or wait it out sometimes, yeah. but... um. You won't. You don't know either. At least me, I I wouldn't know unless I had those times where I did rush into something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's dope. We'll wrap it up right there. Yeah. Boom. Till next time. Peace. Deuce. Appreciate you. All right. All right, bro.